Hello everyone, this is another quick 10 minute session on AWS policies. In this, we'll discuss what are the elements of AWS policies, how we can block or allow the access to any resource, and we'll do a complete hands on. And if you like this session, first of all, please subscribe and go to GK Code Labs and follow the entire AWS playlist. Let's jump onto the session. Now I have logged into my IAM user, which I created in my last session. If you haven't seen, please uh, check out this video. Link will be there in the description. And what permissions we have assigned to this user is obviously the admin as we have named it. But to see that, go to IAM users. This is my user and this is assigned under GKC AWS admins. If we go to this group, we have administrator access. And here is what we'll be discussing in this topic all about the policies. These are AWS managed policies because all the definition for this is already written by AWS. Many such policies with obvious accesses that many of us might need are already developed by AWS. So these are called AWS managed policies. And if we design all the effects, action, resources, principles from ourselves, customer managed policies. But how these function is, let's see. Let's create another user which is not admin but which has only the access to ec2 services so this was admin group let's create another group which is uh, let's say aws developers create group developers and for now to these developers let's give only the access to our ec2 ec2 so there is already a managed policy amazon ec2 full access let's assign let's quickly see what the definition shows and once we see the effect of all these documents then we will closely understand what are statements action effect resources and principal tags etc right now this allows action which start with ec2 so ec2 star there could be any number of actions here you can see on the aws documentation like condition keys allocation id domain so all the things are allowed as a part of this managed policy let's assign this create group Let's create a user which will be only a developer, not the admin. Add user, output, dev, provide access. This provides access to management console for this user. Want to create an IAM user, custom password, and create user. We got the URL for this. Let me log into this in a incognito mode so that we can access both the consoles. Password, sign in. Now, this is the new user. Now, if I go to EC2, for which it has all the permissions, We still get these API errors. This should not come. Let's go back. Okay, this dev user was not, was not assigned to the developer group. Add users to group. Let's add him to developers group. Yeah. Now it's added. Let's go back and refresh it. So slowly they will start disappearing. Here all the errors are gone because now this GKC dev has all the access to every API inside the EC2. Now, once it wants to go to, let's say, IAM, let's go inside IAM and you see all mm -hmm. sorts of accesses are denied because this has only Amazon EC2 full access. That's how assigning any user to a group which has attached policies will restrict your permissions. So this has access only to EC2. Let's try to go to any other service, DynamoDB, go to tables and again, here is you see. Your role does not have permissions to view the list of tables. GKC Arpit Dev is not authorized to perform DynamoDB list tables because right now it has only access to EC2 and after that anything. Now let's see how these policies are designed. If you click on that policy, EC2 full access. Here on the console, you can go to JSON. Here you can see few key values, something like versions, statements, action, effects, and resource. What they mean, let's look closely. So here on the AWS documentation, you can see this is the basic structure of a policy document. It contains different statements here top level elements inside that there may be different statements and each statement has SID that is statement ID effect principal action resource and conditions. So the version is the uh, version of policy language that AWS uh, understands currently what the version that uh, they use may be having different features current version recommended is uh, 2012 1017. If you want to dig deeper go here and here you can see there are two versions. So that is not uh, of that importance. Now statement is the main policy container. SID is statement ID that is optional. Effect can be allow or deny. Principle is any identity that wants to access a particular resource. This is mentioned mainly in the resource based policies where you apply any policy on a resource directly and then you can mention the identity against the principal tag that under what wildcards or what specified uh, identities can access that particular resource under what condition. So principal is basically used to identify a particular user resource or group. Action basically in technical language can be the API that you are going to call against any resource. As here you can see the action is EC2 star or CloudWatch star. So there can be a long list against CloudWatch actions 
something like CloudWatch, colon, request, managed resource, ARNs, alarm actions, request insight rule, log groups. So basically any action that can be called on CloudWatch is allowed. Now resource, any action or effect that is mentioned under that statement on which resource it is getting applied. So as these are not resource based policies, so on all the resources, any action for auto scaling is allowed. Now comes the condition that is optional, but let's see something that can give reference to it. An allow effect can be assigned to all resources providing some conditions as well. A condition is applied where the string equals which string IAM AWS service name equals anything amongst these auto scaling aws.com or elastic load balancing spot fleet. So these are already defined by AWS, but uh, we'll get more inside it once we create our own customer managed policies. So we'll create a policy document on our own. With that policy document, let's try to do something. Dev user that we just created, it already has the Amazon EC2 full access. But what if we need a control access such that Everyone in the developers should be able to log in, but Arpit Dev. So I'm bringing up this use case because we recently attached this policies and we saw how it works. And just to make the difference right now, it will uh, give more idea that how these policies uh, actually control the accesses. So two types of access controls can be there. Role based access control, which we just saw right now, Arpit Dev is assigned to this group and this identity based policy is attached. There can be one another type of access control that is attribute based access control or also known as ABAC. What does that mean is you can see this is the user and here you can see tags. Option. Let's create a tag, add new tag and let's name the key as privilege and assign it some value as limited. This is just a tag. This is not going to impact any role, but based on this tag or attribute, we can limit his access from the policy. So that type of access control that can be done using a policy document are known as attribute based access control. Save changes. Now it's still in the AWS developers group, but tag it has is privilege limited. Now let's go to policies and let's create something very similar to EC2. Let's copy that create a policy right now we don't want to select any service from here we'll just go to json and let's paste all the document from there now as we can see different effects here but another effect we want to add which is going to uh, deny all the accesses where the privilege tag is limited or anyways we have to provide the conditions so let's copy that one and let's do a deny every action on ec2 so ec2 goes with star resource every action will be denied for ec2 apis on every resource and in our condition string equals our condition will now be as the tag is right now on the user that is uh, a principle so any user group account role that comes under the identity base so that will be a principle and there is an api for all the aws resources with a principal tag there can be other resource based tags or any service specific uh, tags as well but to see the demo right now put a condition on aws principal tag and our tag name was privilege and our string should be equal to limited and on this tag we are doing a explicit deny go next and there you can see the ui version of the same uh, json document six services are allowed and one explicit mm -hmm. deny on ec2 full access will be denied where the privilege tag is limited so right now you can see this policy is specifically designed to control based on the tag so this is attribute based access control so let's go and create policy sorry we have to give a policy name Let's give it full access for privileged. Let's give a description where privilege attribute limited. Go and create policy. Now here you can see customer managed. Type is customer managed because we created it manually. Now let's go to the same user or let's go to the group. Let us, let's assign that at developers level to see the difference. You can go to permissions. Let's remove this policy. We want developers to have only the privileged developer should have the EC2 access. So we'll remove this rather than we'll go with add permissions, attach policies. And here we can attach this add button okay so now instead of full access we have only the privileged access and as our user arpit dev is in the developers but arpit dev also has a tag privilege is limited and we have explicit deny over it so if we go back to arpit devs account and let's try to open ec2 and there you see we got all kind of errors because the attribute based restriction is applied so in our next session we'll be looking what possible values these uh, statement elements can have and how we can control the access on a much more granular level. So I hope you liked this session. If you did, please hit that like button and please subscribe to GK Code Labs. Thank you guys. See you later.